All right, coming in at number two on our Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings. Feels like there's one of these every year. A highly skilled Russian who we aren't sure when is going to come to North America, but when Ivan Demidov does, he's all but certainly going to take the league by storm. Yeah, Ivan Demidov is such an exciting prospect, Ross, and Let's just let's just do this right off the top. The Demidov, Matvey, Michkov uh, comparisons are very. You can see why they're being made. But uh, Ross, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. But every single person I've read, heard, and spoken to has Demidov even ahead of where Matt Ga- Matvey Michkov would have been. And I think beyond the talent discrepancy, of which there is one, you yep. also have the aspect that Demidov wants to get to North America. As soon as possible. He's already Maybe. here. He's already here at the Gold yeah. Star Camp ahead of the draft in Fort Lauderdale, where he measured in above six feet. So I've actually got to change that because in my graphic card I was about to pull up, he is listed at 5'11. So now he's almost 6'1, Pilsy. I Dude. know it's just an inch, but between that and the on ice talent that he's been showing at this, this, camp teams are excited about him now everybody lies around this time of year but it does feel like more and more steam is picking up that Ivan Demidov will be a top three pick in this draft maybe even as high as top two depending on if Chicago wants to take a defenseman or if they want the six foot 181 pound right winger left shot who in 30 games in the MHL, the Russian Junior League with Ska, St. Petersburg, had two points in every single game on average. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, 23 goals, 37 assists, a plus 47. I mean, he just dominated the MHL. It's a real head-scratcher why he only played four KHL uh, games now. Overseas, the the politics in hockey is something that we are not fully privy to understanding. So maybe there is some sort of uh, hockey political thing that caused him to not be able to rise. Because Ross, in my opinion, he showed he was too good for the MHL, not this season, but the season before. In 41 MHL games before, he had 19 goals, 43 assists, good for 62 points. And he had 13 points in 10 MHL playoff games. So clearly it seemed like he already dominated that league. But a couple of injuries, uh, Scott Wheeler mentioned that he missed a month and a half with an injured knee. And he also had a lower body injury before um, his team won the championship. So he did miss some time. And maybe that's why he wasn't able to build up enough steam to go to the KHL. But In the MHL playoffs before he had that lower body injury, in 17 playoff games, he had 11 goals and 17 assists, 28 points in 17 games. I mean, all you need to do is look at the stats and watch a couple minutes of film on him, and you can tell Demidov just dominated the MHL. His highest ranked attributes are the way he handles the puck, the way he makes plays, his vision is elite. He does that unique 10-2 10-2 skating style where he puts his heels together and can almost glide around and through checks. It's an impressive skill that he's mastered. And when he turns up the, the pace, almost no defenseman in the MHL highlight reels that I'm watching. Again, it is a lower level of competition that he's dominated for a long period of time, but it is remarkable to see the highlights and the way he's able to manipulate in the offensive zone. Elite prospects ranked him with the best hands in the draft, the best vision in the draft, the best offensive forward in the draft, the highest ceiling in the draft, the second best transition forward, and the third highest floor. We're talking about a guy who, if he was playing with the Moose Jaw Warriors for the last two years, he could be very well competing with Macklin Celebrini for the first overall pick. I think if you're just looking at the on-ice talent, There's less separation than there is in terms of the odds of him going first overall. It's not going to happen. NHL teams value safe centermen who are elite. I don't want to take away from Celebrini because he is an elite talent. We'll get to him later uh, in our draft profile of Macklin Celebrini. But Demidov has that offensive excitement that is going to be a game breaker as early as his rookie year. 
Yeah, and especially the Celebrini San Jose connection that just makes it a slam dunk. But I agree with you. I think the gap of talent between Demidov and Celebrini isn't as far as people think just because Celebrini has been consensus number one all over the board. I feel like people think the gap is enormous, but in my opinion, I, I, it might not be. Do you think there is at least one team in the NHL and any team can just make their list at the top. They know they don't have the first overall pick. Yeah. But to a man, if you asked the head scout of all 32 teams, who do you have first overall? Do you think there's at least one team that has Demidov at number one? Well, now that they've seen that he's six feet tall, uh, probably all 32 teams. Uh, no, they all kidding. swipe, right? Yeah. They're all swiping right on that profile. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Ross. I, I would be interested to to see if we would ever learn that. But uh, let's I'm ask gonna... anyone we see in Vegas that has a team logo on. Who's your first <laughs> overall pick? Yeah, we'll figure that out for you, man. On for the, the people. Style. Uh, I don't think so, though. I still and the fact that Celebrini is a complete centerman. I think that changes a lot too. So maybe there's one. Actually, no. Let me change my answer. I there's one team. I don't know which one it is, but there's one team that has Demidov first. So what's a team getting when they add Ivan Demidov to their system? Oh boy. Uh, they are getting an elite offensive player. I mean, the way uh, David St. Louis in his video, I know I always reference him, but it's because his videos are great breakdowns. What he was doing is, Ross, he would start the video and then pause it when Demidov is stopped and with his head up with the puck in the neutral zone, and he'll pause and he'll say, what play do you think Demidov's going to do here? And it's all, it's almost like if you watch Dora the Explorer back in the day, she like asks the, the audience and then waits and sits there. It's kind of like that. So it, it was brought back to that. But you sit there and you're like, okay, uh, he's probably going to slide it over to the winger across the slot because that guy's open for a nice pass and a one-timer that'll probably be a really good chance. And then he allows the pause to go, and then he hits play, and Demidov uh, goes right at the defender, uh, sauces it over the defender's stick to himself, jumps over the defender's stick, takes it, and goes for a backhand deke. And you're like, that, that's the last possible thing I would have thought a player would do in that situation. Like, there's four other options I would have done, and Demidov does a fifth option that is not available to the normal human brain. Uh, so, and, and David St. Louis shows multiple clips of him doing that. And he's just so creative and deceptive that you're not ever going to be able to figure out what he's going to do with the puck cross. I just wish we were able to see him at an international competition or a, a best on best of some sort. I just, yep. you see the highlight reel and it's like pros versus Joe's. I just wish we could have seen what it would be like against his own peer group. Uh, playing against Team USA and trying to come and beat EJ Emery off the rush, like how would he? How would he change his game to play and and beat the best competition? Like I get that he has one more year left, and if he does go back to Russia, what it's not the worst thing. He'll still be an elite talent when he comes over, which he probably will. Ross, I think it's gonna be hard to get out of that contract. Yeah, but you just see the potential, and I hope as a hockey fan that he goes to Chicago because what he and Connor Bedard could yeah. put up, it would, it would be better than Kane and Taves if it's Bedard and Demidor re reaching yeah. their potential. Yeah. Definitely. That's my hope. And then I look too, and it's like, man, he'd look good with Mason McTavish, Leo Carlson in Anaheim. Like the teams that are two, three, four are all set with a centerman that they've just drafted yep. high Adam Fantilli, for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Like they could all take the winger, take the winger. I just know that defensemen and centermen are always a premium at the draft, but this is the type of winger that's going to make that centerman reach their potential or even higher because of how good he is and how creative he is from the wing. So I'm rooting for him to go to Chicago at two. And I, I don't think I'll be okay if he goes to Montreal at five. Yeah, I I would to be all shocked. the Habs fans out there. This would be the best pick if he gets to five. You would win the draft. Win the draft? It they've got an extra pick in the first round, and this 
Yeah, it would be pretty. Yeah, if they get Demidov, that's absolutely massive. Um, he can't go past three teams who have all just drafted big time centermen. There's no way. Yeah, there's really no way. Like Ross, I put it in my notes as a two point five percent chance he slides to seventh overall. <laughs> like it's it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but I'm telling you, there is a chance. But yeah, there's just so many things that you're going to like about him. I think he's going to be a lethal offensive weapon, especially on the power play, Ross. Like, give this guy a little more time and space in the offensive zone, and teams are going to look silly trying to defend him. Well, I like elite prospects shades of. It's Kirill Kaprizov, right? Like, we yeah. watched him manipulate in the offensive zone, the game we saw in Minnesota this year. Like, he is an elite talent. I don't think you're going to have to wait as long either as they did for Kirill Kaprizov. So, uh, how many stars, Bilzy, for Ivan Demidov in that 2.5% chance that he's available? Uh, I got him at five stars, Ross. Like, okay, like, still five-star guy. Hey, there's a chance. There's a chance he could slide. Uh, I'm mostly joking here. But this is the type of player, Ross. Like, you don't... Who cares about the Russian factor? Who cares no, you... about a couple knee... Uh, or a couple lower body injuries? Who cares that for whatever reason he didn't play much in the KHL don't care about any off ice issues. When this guy has the puck on his stick, he is one of the most electric players in hockey. You have to take him if you have a chance. And if your team just drafted him, get your Demidov jerseys already printed. And if you're a team that's watching this and you passed on him and chose a different player, I feel sorry for you because there's not many players that I would feel comfortable taking over Demidov. He's unbelievable. And he comes in at number two on our locked on senators, NHL draft rankings with an average of 3.0. And here are the breakdowns from our scouts here at LOSP, Bob McKenzie and Craig button. Both have him at number two on their TSN boards, McKean's and elite prospects and Scott Wheeler of the athletic all have him at number two. Chris Peters has him at number three. And oh, Corey Bronman. Oh, Corey Bronman has Ivan Demidov eighth on his list. Time will tell, but Ivan Demidov, a true, true competitor to get into number two to Chicago at this year's NHL draft. For more draft profiles, go check us out on YouTube, Locked on Senators.